Hello and welcome back to the tutorial. In this video I want to talk about heteroscedasticity in the error terms of an OLS regression. Again I'm using the advertisement and sales data set and I'm converting the store variable to a factor. Uh, you're familiar with this output already uh, and I'm also using a dummy variable for the store here so this is inclu going to include an additional variable, which is either one or zero, uh, depending on whether this is the store two or store one. So this will be one if it's store two and zero if it is store one. And the way we can interpret this is that um, we have an intercept for store one, which is just the estimate of the intercept here. And then this intercept is shifted upwards by roughly 1,900 for store two. Notice that in this case, we are saying that the slope, that is the average increase in sales due to an additional euro spent on advertisement is uh, the same for both stores. We could also add an interaction term to see if uh, the slope is different between the two stores. But let's just look at uh, the residuals of this uh, regression. We can get the residuals of a saved LM object by calling the resid function or also equivalently the residuals function. Um, just saving this to a data frame and creating an ID variable so we can pass this to uh, ggplot and so we can see our residuals. Usually uh, we make the assumption in OLS uh, in order for it to be the most efficient estimator that the variance of the residuals is the same over our entire sample. However, in this case, we can see that the variance kind of in the beginning is less than the variance at the end. So the, the spread of our uh, residuals increases uh, towards the end of our sample here. So the way we can remedy this uh, is that we need to adjust our estimates of the standard errors in our model. Since the standard errors of the coefficients are based on the standard errors of the residuals. And we need to account for this uh, change in the standard error variance. And we need to load two libraries in order to do that. One is the LM test library and the second is the sandwich library, which provides us with uh, an appropriate estimate for uh, heteroscedastic standard errors. So you can now call the coef test function and specify a variance covariance matrix here. Uh, technically, I could also uh, calculate a variance covariance matrix that is appropriate for our heteroscedastic standard errors beforehand. But using the sandwich library, I can simply pass this VCOF HC uh, and it will automatically um, adjust the standard errors and the p-values in our model. And as you can see, if we uh, scroll back up, um, our standard errors have changed somewhat. We have 6,100 here instead of 6,068. Uh, this is not too dramatic here, but the, this is the correct way of uh, estimating uh, the significance of our uh, coefficients. Uh, in case you want to get more into these uh, heteroscedasticity robust standard errors, there are a couple of different types 
called HC025, uh, and then there are also variants of some of them. The default here is the HC3 estimator, uh, which is uh, which uh, does some appropriate um, uh, adjustment to the basic robust standard errors and was found to be the uh, best for a lot of use cases. You can change this around. Uh, you can look at the help file of the VCUF uh, HC function, but in general, this should be sufficient to deal with uh, heteroskedasticity in your model. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon.